What's up everybody? If you are new here, my name is Spencer Harris and this week we're going to be doing something that I haven't done in a while. We're going to be talking about a lens. We're doing a lens review and specifically the Canon 24-105 f4 L series lens that I just bought. And, uh, and yeah, let's just get into it. Well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. It, 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 it looks something like this. I've had this lens for about, uh, I guess, a month and a half. Month I bought it. It was a Christmas present to myself, um, and I really, really wanted an L series lens. I don't own one. I own a 50 millimeter prime, at the Nifty 50, and then I have the what I'm shooting on right now, a Rokinon Cinema lens um, at a 24 prime as well. And so I really needed uh, a nice zoom lens that was going to cover, sort of be my like everyday lens if I'm going to go out and shoot and I'm not exactly sure what I want to do or what I want to get and I only want to carry one lens, I needed something like that and uh, I, I landed on the 24 to 105. Now this is the Mark I version and I did get it used. One thing about buying used gear is I'm, I'm very hesitant uh, to be honest with you, but there are sites like Adorama, I'm sure B&H sells used stuff and Lens Pro to Go. A lot of rental houses will sell their used gear, but the one thing you have to look for if you can't get your hands on the, uh, the item in person is a rating system. And this had a very good rating on Adorama. I think they rate theirs from like A plus to A, A minus, B, and so forth. And this had an A plus rating. I just kind of trusted them and ordered it and it came in and it is flawless. There is not a scratch on it. The lens is in perfect condition. So I feel really, really good about this used purchase. So yeah, let's just go ahead and jump into the the outside, the physical aspects of this lens. And uh, right up here, you're gonna see Canon Zoom Lens EF 24 to 105 L Series IS USM. IS is gonna be your image stabilization. USM stands for ultrasonic motor. And what the ultrasonic motor is, is there's a motor inside of this lens that's gonna help you focus very, very quickly. That motor is just gonna do all the work for you. So if you're if you're looking for that focus or, or whatever, what have you, this lens is gonna have a very fast focus for you. Next up, we have the stabilization on off button and the autofocus manual focus button. This outside ring here is going to be your focus ring and then the ring down here is gonna be your zoom ring. With all L-series lenses, the build quality is absolutely amazing. You can see here, everything is metal on the inside. The lens here is, it's pretty big. It's a pretty big lens. The aperture is an F4 and it's got a 10 blade aperture system. So you're gonna get some really nice bokeh with this um, when you zoom in or lower your aperture all the way down to F4. Now, I did not get the F2.8 version because they just don't make it. But here's a fun little fact. I shoot a lot with the Blackmagic 4K. It's what I'm shooting on right now. And I have a Metabone speed booster on there. What that speed booster is gonna do is it's gonna actually give me a little bit more aperture. So this F4, as you can see here, actually turns into a, an F2.8, which I thought was really, really, really cool. I didn't even think about that when I bought this lens. I was kind of like, okay, F4, I'm gonna have trouble in some low light, but not with the Black Magic, especially with that Metabone Speed Booster. So, plus there, for sure. I'm getting a little confused here because I've got one lens here that isn't a lens, and then the other lens here that's not a lens, it's actually got coffee in it, but this coffee cup was modeled after this lens specifically, so I'm constantly trying to make sure I'm not sipping out of this one or showing you guys, that, anyway, you don't care. Now let's talk specs. Like I said, this is an F4 with a 10 blade aperture system and it can go from F4 to F22. And that is a constant F4. It does have stabilization. So those Canon shooters like me, um, I shoot on the 1DX2, I have no in-body stabilization. So having a lens that does do a little bit of stabilization is definitely a plus. Let's talk range. So here is the 105. And then when you go all the way in, that's the 24. Now, if you're putting this on a gimbal, it might mess with your balance if you zoom all the way out and then zoom all the way back in. But, you know, that's just gonna be trial and error and and, uh, and yeah. Next up is weight. This is gonna come in at 1.75 pounds. And that really doesn't bother me because like I said, I shoot on the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. So that body is very, very, very light. So anything that I can do to add some weight to that camera, it's really gonna help out my handheld shots and making them a little bit less jittery. The more weight you add to a camera, the better it's gonna be with those handheld shots just because it's just gonna kind of weigh your hands down. It's gonna, it's just gonna make things a, a bit smoother for you um, instead of just holding you know, a very light object. There's a little bit more room to mess up. So if you've got something nice and substantial with some weight to it in your hands, it's just all the better. Next up, we have filter size. So like I said in a previous video, which you can see here, 
The inside of the cap, the lens cap, is gonna tell you what filter size you need for this lens or any lens that you buy. This one is the standard L series 77 millimeter. So I knew right off the bat I needed to get a 77 ND, variable ND filter for this lens. Luckily I had one for the Rokinon and uh, I just switch it over to this lens whenever I need it. I probably should get another one just so I'm not switching back and forth all the time, but leave me alone. So why did I buy this lens specifically? Instead of maybe the 24 to 70 2.8, I went with the 24 to 105 f4. Well, because I wanted that little bit of extra focal length and this is gonna cover me in pretty much any everyday situation that I might be shooting in. It's gonna cover my 24 millimeter range, my 35, my 50, my 85, and anything after that up to 105. Plus, I just don't have the budget to be buying all of these primes. Like, a, I do own a 24 prime, but to get a 35 prime, uh, an 85 prime, and then all these other measurements, I just, you know, this, just, just give, just give me this. Another reason why I went with this lens is because I do a lot of film and photography. So with the filming that I do, I, I really like to challenge myself and get a lot of really cool shots. So if you're not aware of this, the further away you are from the subject and then you zoom in, it's gonna give you that really nice depth that you see in a lot of feature films and even in photography. And then you're also gonna be able to get this really cool parallax effect that Michael Bay is so famous for. And that's when you get far, far away from your subject, zoom in, and then kind of rotate around them, and that background's gonna move very fast. And I'll show you an example right now. That was a shot um, that I did for a commercial in downtown LA, and when I saw that this could do that, I was so pumped. It just it was a shot that just came out so cool, and uh, I'm gonna be doing a lot more of those shots. Not as many as Michael Bay, but um, it's just nice to have that option. So let's go ahead and take a look at the test that I did here in the studio. I wanted to test two things out. So first thing I wanted to test was this says that it can go to, you can see here, I'm sorry I didn't explain this earlier. This says that it will focus on something up to one and a half feet or 18 inches away. And I wanted to try that. So I put the 50 millimeter down on the table and I got this lens as close as possible while still being able to keep focus. And it turns out it was 12 inches away and we were, we were banging out focus. So that, that's pretty cool. The next thing I wanted to test was with that constant aperture and zooming in, whether or not it would keep focus on the subject while zooming in and zooming out. And you can see here, I've got a Polaroid camera up here on the shelf that I zoomed in and zoomed out of, and uh, it did, it kept the focus. I will tell you that there's a little tip. When I did this, I zoomed in first, got my focus, and then I zoomed out, and that seemed to keep the focus a lot better, and then I just zoomed in and zoomed out. If you focus while zoomed out, and then you zoom in, you might lose that focus. So just make sure that you're focused tight first, and then zoom out, and then you can zoom back in and out. And there you have it. I mean, I don't know what else I can get into. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. And, uh, and yeah, let me know what you're shooting on. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would truly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next video. Peace.